Welcome back to Finale Crossover. Playoffs are here. Playoffs are great. You know, there's some series that you want to follow. I know you follow most of the series, but I've, I'm going to start off with what team impressed me the most. And I got to say, the Raptors. Shout out to the Raps. You know, I was a, I was a doubter. I was a doubter just because they're from Toronto. It doesn't mean I had to follow them, but they've been proven. They've, been, they've had history they've, of yeah. being doubted. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. But yeah. they have been shining in terms of like their franchise record, and also coming to the playoffs, they have were on that losing streak, and they came in strong. They came into play, but like you said earlier, what's going to have to define them is the third game, the game three on the road. But so far, their whole team has been playing well. Mm -hmm. Their bench is scary. Mm -hmm. To have a bench unit that plays as good as the first unit is like a blessing for them. And then you got everyone that can play now. You got DeMar shooting threes and getting hand ones, which we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. We've seen unselfish plays. So the Raptors, for me, I've been most impressed with. Uh, the second team I've been most impressed with, I think, is I, I like Utah. I actually like Utah. Mm -hmm. Because it's like that it's, that, it's that rising of a star and the... Um, and just seeing a rookie being able to, like, just to, to see veterans trusting a rookie, mm -hmm. like, that's what impressed me. Like, how he was not really known. He's not, there's not a lot of hype around him. Because everyone, you hear Ben Simmons as the rookie of the year, you hear all these other, Tatum. But to see someone like that, very soft-spoken, and to see him make plays, not, not talk, but, like, his actions speak and his teammates looking for him. Um, I think those are the two teams that really caught my attention. So, how about you? What teams have impressed you the most? Unlike PJ, I, I, I just saw something different with the Raptors this year. Mm -hmm. I, I felt something different. That's why when we were doing the preview, I told them that it's going to be a sweep against the, the Wizards for them. And it's just the only thing hurdle really then was Cavs. So I feel like they're not scared of any teams in the East except for Cavs. And because they're the only ones that they don't have a matchup against LeBron. Yeah. Whereas with any team that they had to face in, in the East, I think they have a really good matchup, even against Sixers because... I mean, as good as Joel and Beatus, they have really good bigs that can that can bang on them down low, like JV, Baby, um, and Ibaka. Not on Pirtle too and Siakam. So I think that Raptors didn't. What, I'm not as you know shocked in terms of how they're playing right now. The only thing I'm worried about is when LeBron they have to face LeBron. There's a certain <laughs> when the king comes there's a certain to change town. in the atmosphere happens. I, and and uh, I'm, I agree with you as well with uh, Donovan Mitchell in terms of this guy feels like. He didn't, you know, he's, he's NBA ready ever since he was in college. Like, this guy just went in the NBA and he said, you know, the fame doesn't phase me, the spotlight doesn't phase me. I'm going to play exactly like how I played in, in, in college, which is impressive to mm. see in a rookie, right? But uh, what I've been impressed by was the, uh, the most in terms of watching them play was the Pacers. Nobody mm. knew. I, I mean, these, these, everybody thought that Cleveland's going to have a cakewalk in the first round. Nobody's paying attention to the Pacers. I was because I had all deep on my fantasy and Miles Turner. So I, I had a feeling that they were going to cause some problems. Uh, I don't know how long they can keep this up in terms of causing so much problem against the Cavs because they won the first game. But the second game, they were there. They were only down a couple of you know, They were just missing shots at the end that they, they made in the first game. So mm. they've been really impressive. And I think they have that. They have the in, in terms of matchup. They had the kind of players that can cause a Cleveland problems in terms of, and Love just recently had a hand injury on game two. So this is critical for the Cavs. If they don't have Kevin Love, you're not going to have anybody down low that can, that can, sh that can spread the floor. Uh, and they're not going to have any, besides Kyle Korver, who's playing well for them, they're not going to have any consistent player that can spread the floor for them and to allow King James uh, LeBron James to kind of get in the lane and create for everybody else. So I, I'm scared for, I would be mm. scared for the Cavs. Because I've been really impressed with the Pacers and Oladipo. And not Oladipo, but the rest of the players that they have. Miles Turner, Darren Collison, Bogdan. They've been really good for them in the playoffs. And the second thing I've been impressed is, this is, uh, I was completely wrong maybe. I don't know if something wrong with the Bucks, but Boston has just been amazing too. Mm. The first two games, they, I wasn't, I, we were talking about it. We can't leave it up to a rookie or to a bunch of players with no playoff experience. Uh, in terms of uh, back, they didn't. They lost Kyrie for the whole season. They don't have Marcus Smart yet, and they didn't have Gordon Hayward. Everybody thought this was going to be a lost season for them, but they kept fighting. They, they they were fighting, wanting it more than anybody in the court against the Bucks. Like Terry Rozier is just roasting and and getting Eric the Bledsoe. Eric Bledsoe. Yeah. I mean, this guy has been scoring 20 points a game on Eric Bledsoe. Everybody thought that Bledsoe was one of the premier point guards, yeah. like athletic. 
and there's here is a backup guy that's supposed to be you know not even the second string of point guard because he's behind Marcus Smart. He's a he's schooling Eric Bledsoe and playing like a top tier point guard right now. And, and I mean Jalen Brown, the first the first the youngest player to score thirty points in a playoff game. I, I've been impressed with him. Like I didn't see this coming. Nobody saw this coming. But remember, he was a third pick. So they had a lot of expectation in his first year, but he was drafted by Boston, so he didn't really have the opportunity to shine and grow as a player. And this is, this, you know, this opportunity that he was given, he took advantage, full advantage of it. Uh, on top of that, Jason Tatum took full advantage. He's been go- so good for them. I think that we may have been, I don't know if Giannis has been showing up for them, for the Bucks, and it's still nothing. So it's, it's been pretty surprising in terms of the Bucks. Not showing, not being able to stop a team that's missing three of their <laughs> two of their Stars, best, two yeah. of their best players. Yeah. You got to give credit to Brad Stevens too to be yeah. able to gel those rookies and keep them confident like that. Let's go on to the big question. The last question. Who Here do we you go. Think, who do you think is the team? What team is that? likely to come back from a 2-0 start? Let me tell you who isn't ready to come back. Spurs, and not just because <laughs> of the tragic happening with Pop's, you know, yeah. wife, but like the Spurs are not equipped. To face Golden State, they don't and have enough to weapon. well, no they weapon. Their no morale Kawhi. is done. Yeah, it's too too much to handle. Mm-hmm. So Spurs are done. I'll say Wizards are done too because, well, it's, it's up in the air. But I don't think I think Raptors are just a different beast this year. So Spurs and Wizards are done. I feel like Blazers can come back because I was gonna say the same thing. Yeah. Blazers is the only because you know Lillard's a beast. Lillard's a beast, and Portland is a higher seed. I feel like it's an ego thing. They have to come back, and and. I don't, it's just the other, the they can't have that. They can't have that. Yeah. I think Damian Lillard is going to show up in Game Three. Yeah, they're of all the teams in terms of the possibility, I'd say Blazers, but because the rest of the other team like Bucks, Wizards, Spurs is very <laughs> yeah. low, I'd see the Blazers a little bit low as well, just because I yeah. just because this I mentioned this on our first um, when we did a preview. If Rondo shows up like he plays like he did in Boston, this is a whole series mm-hmm. change, and that's exactly what he did. He has a ring. That's exactly what he's doing right now for for the Pelicans. He's playing exactly like he played in Boston in terms of orchestrating, averaging close to triple double, like orchestrating the offense, playing exceptional defense. That's what he's doing in this game, shutting down. He's helping him and and Drew uh, and Drew Holiday are literally shutting down both McCollum and Lillard, mm. and that's their main main offense, their engine for the Blazers, and yeah. that's exa- that's the reason why they're they're down 2-0. So if Rondo plays exactly like he played when he was at Boston when they won a ring, and that's exactly what he's doing, I think it's it's a very low chance for the Blazers to come back. Mm. How about the Bucks? Bucks, they have a chance. If I don't know, because if Bledsoe doesn't show up, we can't do anything. Jabari, they're not giving enough minutes. Yeah. So it's Middleton and 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 Giannis is really stepping up for them. But Still Boston nothing. is playing as a team. Yeah. That's a dynasty right there. Yeah. <laughs> Boston's culture. A team that's winning with two of their best players missing. That's impressive. All right. Those are our opinions. Mark, anything you'd like to say before we end the show? Thank you for all our fans that's been following us. If you have any questions, if you have players that you want to spotlight through us, message us Facebook or Instagram or Twitter at Pinoy Crossover. We're, we're always welcome to receive messages. So we always reply to you guys. So. Thank you again for watching the show. Keep supporting Filipino basketball. And if you have any opinions about any teams or anything that you'd like to say about the NBA or PBA or anything else, let us know in the comments on our social media channels. Uh, until then, stay ballin'.